Find the coordinates of the vertex for each quadratic function listed. Then specify whether each vertex is a maximum or minimum. For part A, we see that the function is y is equal to 4x squared. Let's go ahead and make a small table of values just to get a better feeling for this quadratic function. When x is equal to negative 2, we get the square of negative 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. When x is equal to negative 1, we get the square of negative 1 is 1, and 1 times 4 is 4. When we let x be 0, we get the square of 0 is 0, 0 times 4 is 0. When x is equal to 1, we get the square of 1, which is 1, and 1 times 4 is 4. And when x is equal to 2, we get the square of 2 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16. Notice that all the y values are non-negative, and the smallest value is 0. Let's go ahead and plot the ordered pairs so we can see the graph of the quadratic function. First of all, we plot the point negative 2, 16. Then the point negative 1, 4. Then 0, 0. Then 1, 4. And finally, 2, 16. We then connect these points with a smooth curve. We see that the graph is a parabola that opens upward. Therefore, the vertex is the lowest point, a minimum, and specifically it is the point 0, 0. For part b, the function is p of n is equal to 1 12 times n squared. We'll approach the problem in the same way, but we'll use our graphing calculator to speed up the work a little bit. We go to y equals to enter our function. It's 1 12th. Multiply by the square of the independent variable, and in our calculator, the independent variable is x. So we enter 1 12 times x squared. Next, we want to make a small table of values, so we'll go to Table Set. And I'm going to suggest that we start at a value of negative 3, and then increment by 1. Make sure that the independent and dependent variables are on auto. Next, we go to the table, second graph, and we can see the corresponding y values are non-negative, and the smallest of those non-negative values is 0. Notice also that we've got a similar type of symmetry that we had in part A. On either side of 0, we have the same matching values. One unit above and below 0 is 0 0.08333. Two units above and below 0 is 0.33333. And three units above and below 0 is 0.75. So we see right away that the vertex is 0, 0, and that that vertex is a minimum point. To see that graphically, we can sketch a graph of the function by creating a good viewing window. Let's go to Zoom and select zoom decimal number 4. We see that the parabola opens upward and the lowest point is at the point 0, 0. For part C we have the function f of x is equal to minus 8x squared. So we'll go back to y equals, clear out our first function and enter minus 8x squared. First of all, we'll view a table of values. Go to second, graph. At this time, we see that all the values are not positive. 
they're either negative or zero and in this case zero is the largest value but we do see the same type of symmetry we see negative eight on either side of zero negative thirty two on either side of zero and negative seventy two on either side of zero so the point zero zero is still the vertex but this time zero zero is the highest point let's go to the graph to see this and we see that our parabola opens downward and that zero zero is the highest point so zero zero is still the vertex but now it's a maximum for part d we have q of t is equal to minus one twelve times t squared to explore this function we go back to y equals clear out our previous function and then our negative one twelfth times the square of the independent variable so times x squared create a table of values second graph notice that once again the y values are either negative or zero there's the special symmetry around zero zero so zero zero is the vertex and it is once again a maximum when we sketch the graph we see that the parabola opens downward and the, the point zero zero is the highest point you might notice that all of our functions had the form y is equal to a times the square of the independent variable when a function has this form we see that zero zero is always the vertex to determine whether the vertex is a minimum or maximum we need to look at the value of a in parts a and b a was four and a was one twelfth both of those values were positive which meant that our parabola opened upward and the vertex was a minimum in part c and d the a values were negative eight and negative one twelfth the a values were negative therefore our parabolas opened downward and the vertices were maximums so if a is greater than zero that implies that the vertex will be a minimum and if a is less than zero then that implies that the vertex will be a maximum